when this mother city abode won joint first place in the UK Architectural Review's International Design Competition, it beat 900 entries from around the world. It also sent the careers of architects Anya van der Merwe and Maciej Miszewski into orbit. This is an architectural masterpiece. I can't believe this was built 15 years ago. It's no wonder why it's critically acclaimed. Oh gosh, thank you. I mean, that's really okay. wonderful. And it's, it's just so fantastic to be back here, you know, after 15 years. We've, we've never done a shoot in this house before. It's been a kind of private retreat for, for this wonderful family. But for us, it was a momentous, you know, sort of moment in our career. And it's just nice that you come back and you still love it. No, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic to revisit an idea and see that it's sustained itself over 15 years. And that's really very rewarding in our work. We're very lucky to have been part of the process. And it's won so many awards and it even won the best building in South Africa, voted for by the public. That was extraordinary. I mean, uh, we, we were was very surprised. Very surprising. I think the name Tree House, you know, it has this theme of these wonderful trees and there is something that appeals to all of us and even just that name. You know, we all want to be able to escape and this house is a little bit like that. It's a place that you can ex escape to um, and there's a bit of magic about it. And and I think that's what appealed to the public. I feel very at home, like I'm in amongst the trees. Like yeah. in my culture, well, it's a very African thing that we would gather under a tree. Yeah. Was that the intention? It was definitely something that we talked about at the time. And uh, there are actually some wonderful drawings we found last week about um, that we made of these pine trees that are very much part of this valley. And so these structural trees were a kind of a metaphorical or symbolic representation of those pine trees so that the building would sort of seem as if it had almost grown out of the valley rather than just been placed in the valley. Yes, absolutely. The tree as a structural element is in fact supporting the canopy of the roof. Wait, so this is supporting everything here? That's right. And the perimeter, the envelope, is free of the structure. It's only an enclosure. Yeah. So there's a separation between the walls and the roof. So the roof in some way is almost like the leaves of the tree. Okay. Um, and the surrounding glass is just in order to make this a nice warm pavilion in the sky. The branches that you have here, was that strategic or was that there just to look pretty? Strategically random, <laughs> or, random or randomly strategic. Mm -hmm. It is calculated. Mm -hmm. It is calculated to carry the load and also in Cape Town to withstand the wind. So the narrow bars you see at, at the clear story glazing are in fact tires that keep the canopy down from blowing away in the southeaster. I actually thought that was holding it up. No, 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 <laughs> it's holding it down. <laughs> That's Cape Town for you. Yeah. Anya and Machio originally designed a house for the same client in Forest Town, Joburg, for which they won a project award, but that home was never built. Finding this secluded site amongst the umbrella pines, they finally got to turn a blueprint into a building. This is a perspective that you don't see every day. You can see from the top all the way down to the bottom floor. Yeah, you know, what we wanted to do was we really wanted to borrow all this gorgeous light, you know, and then filter it down to the bottom story so that it feels again like being under a canopy of trees. This also represents the platforms of the tree house. So you always have that feeling of being separated from the ground as if you were on a platform. And then we introduced the spiral staircase that is in a way almost a kind of a route of discovery that you take moving down through the levels of the house um, with the light coming from above. It sort of becomes a pivotal point in the house that connects everything together. Anya and Machia were the lead design architects on the Cape Town International Convention Center and that success had its roots right here in the treehouse. So this is the main bedroom of the house and uh, it has this glass facade on the one side um, that you know provides these fantastic views towards the garden and uh, then the bed sits against the curvilinear wall that provides a sort of sheltering backdrop and uh, we think it must be really lovely to read a book here on a summer's afternoon and just watch what's going on in the garden. 
But in contrast to the living spaces, it's also more contained, it's more cellular. So there's a, an intentional contrast between the open space upstairs and the contained space in the private bedroom. Yeah, more cosy even, you yeah, know, exactly. sort of tighter, softer spaces. There's also this wonderful piece in the bedroom. It is a family heirloom and there was a concern about bringing the old into the new, but the two really work together nicely. And this piece has this wonderful waving front that sort of mimics the other curves in the building and it all works together really well. They needed the timber-clad walls and oak floors to provide a sense of warmth. With an Italian client so used to excellence in carpentry and joinery, they also knew that any design theory was only as good as the finishes and fittings. This is really one of the favorite spaces in the house. I mean, it's just such a glamorous room. It's just gorgeous. Well, I can see why. Even though it's quite open, it's still quite private. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can lie here in your foam bath or have your steam shower and absolutely nobody can see you. Yeah, I'm the shower guy, but this bath looks inviting enough for me. In the bath, you really lose yourself to the feel of the place. Descending the stairs reveals Anya and Machio's attention to detail in the 12 months it took to build this home. So here we are at the bottom of the house and this is the bottom of this sort of kloof element which waves through the house and uh, you can see the tree coming all the way down from the top all the way down to and this is the sort of forest floor. I now see what you mean by this journey of discovery like we start at the top of the home all the way down to the roots and it's got this almost cave feel to it. Yes indeed at the top everything was open and much lighter and then we came down the staircase and the space becomes more enclosed. Um, it is the heavier base of the building which roots the building to the ground. However, through there is the pool and the garden. In the World Architecture Competition, it won Best Building in Africa and the Middle East, and it still looks the part. After 15 years, this home is timeless. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that's wonderful of you to say that. I mean, it's a very, very special house for us, and it's great to be back here. And I mean, the house and the coverage that it's got has meant such a lot to our practice and our career. And we hold it really, really close to our hearts. Perhaps its best legacy is that the home was included in a publication of 1,001 buildings in the world you must see in your lifetime.